Good afternoon, everybody. Hello. Welcome. Nice to see all of you. I see a lot of familiar faces and uh, some new folks as well. Uh, but we always appreciate your time and energy and uh, working with DNH. And thank you, as always, for your uh, past and continued business. Uh, I'm excited to be here. My name is Michael Schwab. I am uh, one of the co presidents here at DNH. And I think about our business in a, a lot of different lights, but the one thing that has been foundational to DNH is the support of the retail community. And I've been at DNH 28 years, and we have that, I call it an unwavering support, in that, you know, DNH is not fickle about uh, leaning in and being there to help you guys succeed in the marketplace. And I know at times it seems that, uh, boy, this is a challenging business, and times are tough, and margins are tight, and, the, you know, the market's not growing necessarily. But in my experience, and uh, in uh, observing this over many years, the fact of the matter is we always find ways to succeed. That This is a robust industry. There's always new and innovative technology. Windows uh, 7 end of support coming creates a great opportunity for all of us. Um, when I think about the second half of the year, I'm extremely excited. I think tariffs, had they put in place uh, at the end of this month, uh, across all the notebook category in particular, that would have been maybe a uh, traumatic uh, price erosion to our ability to sell at the levels that we all want to sell. So my sense is that that's been pushed off to December 15th. That creates an exceedingly valuable runway for all of us to take, it, to take advantage of the holiday selling season. I'm excited that the numbers are coming forth in uh, consumption for consumers to be very positive in June and July that that was uh, growing nicely. So maybe we're B2B investment isn't as strong as supporting GDP. The consumer has not taken their foot off the accelerator. So the fact of the matter is that we're all in a good space to be leveraging uh, that as an opportunity to continue to grow our business. I also feel as an organization, DNH uh, prides itself on not competing with any of you. We don't have our own you know, marketplace presence. We're not private labeling and competing with our manufacturers. We really are the true definition of a wholesale distributor that's here to help you grow your business, to bring you ideas, to work with our inside and outside sales staff, to figure out ways that we win together. So that I think that collaboration has been proven out over many years, and hopefully you recognize the fact that uh, you can lean on DNH at all times to help you succeed, maintain your competitiveness, uh, help you guys, which I know um, at retail, I know they don't uh, overhire, so I know everybody has a lot on their plate. So the reality is that if you can use DNH and leverage us as the conduit for information flow and programs and pricing and bids and opportunity buys, uh, we want to be that um, provider of um, solutions for you, uh, not only uh, for the foreseeable future, but for many years uh, coming forth. And I can say that because we've actually been in business 101 years. Uh, which is not many companies can say. We are um, family owned and employee owned. So 36% of the company is owned by all the people that you work with. And we think that gives us a competitive advantage because they're working hard to earn your business. Because if you guys do well and successful, inevitably DNH does well and in turn helps them uh, and helps their company that they own. The other thing about um, DNH that hopefully you recognize is the fact that uh, we hire best in class people. And I want to walk you through and introduce and make sure you know everybody that uh, works for DNH. Most importantly, me. <laughs> and uh, I do have a brother, Dan. Some of you might have met Dan at the various events. If you see him, please remind him that I'm the smarter brother, better looking brother. We always like to uh, you know, make sure there's no um, confusion on that point. Uh, I also like to thank the great vendors that we have working with us today. And you can see there's some stalwarts there, Microsoft and Intel, uh, very consistent in supporting the ecosystem that we know and love very dearly, but also some new and innovative technologies that we always want to bring forth into the marketplace. And I encourage you guys, as you see new vendors in the marketplace that maybe have not hit our radar, uh, please bring them forward because we want to evaluate those and see if we can help facilitate uh, opportunities, because I know it's hard for you guys sometimes to bring on a vendor for a particular SKU or two SKUs, but if we can help you guys support those endeavors, we definitely want to be there to do that as well. So the fearless leader of our retail group, who manages literally half our business, so you know, DNH today is a four and a half billion dollar company, half of it is at retail, and that is Fred Eddy, 
And Fred had worked on the manufacturer side for a number of years, but he's been with D&H now over three decades. And as far as somebody that he's not sitting in, you know, some castle sort of, you know, pulling the strings, he is out there front and center meeting with you guys, visiting accounts, meeting with manufacturers, and working with his sales team uh, to make sure that we're successful. And I think Fred probably has the most experience and um, knowledge of what works for you to help you grow your business and getting those programs and opportunities from the manufacturer. So uh, thank you for all your hard work, Fred. Uh, Leslie, who many of you work with, or she's been with DNH for many years as well, in many different capacities, uh, nobody is out there working deals like Leslie. She really has the um, tenacity. Uh, if you would look at something and say, this is not going to work for the retailer, DNH, the manufacturer, she will figure out a way to get it done. And Leslie, uh, we're very proud to have her on our team as well. Uh, we've taken the country, and as many manufacturers do, uh, divided into three areas, and we've got great sales leadership there with uh, Nick, Beth, and Vinny. And they, uh, again, are very seasoned, uh, work for manufacturers, work for DNH for a number of years, and they are a great resource for all of you. And uh, believe me, they are, even though you may not see them as often as you see your sales rep, uh, rest assured they are out there uh, helping deliver opportunities for you uh, to be successful in this business. And then from an inside sales staff, uh, DNH is very proud of the fact that we have very little turnover as an organization. And sometimes turnover creates havoc, there's inconsistencies, there's that, I call it tribal knowledge that disappears at times because you don't have that consistency. So we're fortunate to have Tim and Larry uh, from an inside perspective that help deliver uh, success for you from an operational pr perspective and make sure their inside sales team are doing what they need to do to uh, make sure your orders are getting out timely and accurately and getting the right pricing and all the good programs that come with that. The interesting thing also is some of our competitors, um, some manufacturers offshore some of these resources. You know, uh, you might be talking to Costa Rica at some point, depending on who you're working with. Our sense is we would much rather have these folks in central Pennsylvania that uh, understand the business, that uh, recognize the fact that it's a people-to-people -people business. So we could say everything would be going, you know, just send me a price, you know, we'll order it if it's your competitive and in stock. But well, the reality is that's not how the business works. The, the business continues to be a people-to-people, face-to-face -people, -face business, and working with uh, talented folks inside uh, our Harrisburg headquarters, uh, I think, uh, adds value along the way as well. And speaking of our headquarters, this is our new headquarters. So we're actually in the existing building 67 years. That is a long time. It's a little long in the tooth. Uh, literally, we're hiring new people and we're putting them in closets. We are just out of space. Uh, so we're very excited. Uh, this is an aerial view. It's a 50-acre campus, double the capacity. You know, so we're betting on continued growth. Lots of um, new areas for our salespeople to be collaborative in the huddle rooms and the trainings and allows us to really sort of deliver the best-in-class experience from a headquarters operation uh, in central Pennsylvania. So we're excited, uh, and it's actually the move is less than 30 days away. So hopefully you guys, the next time you're in Harrisburg, you're visiting us, and uh, you have the opportunity to take the tour of the headquarters, because we're very proud of uh, the future d and and what that is going to look like. We're also reinvesting in our logistics, and I don't have uh, details to share with you today because it's just a big piece of land. But you know, we continue to increase the size and capacity of our distribution center. So our next investment will be to double our size of our Harrisburg distribution center, which will be great, uh, particularly because so much of the population is on the East Coast. And uh, our ability to have uh, ample supply in the central Pennsylvania area to service the whole Northeast corridor is, I think, critical to our success. So we're ex excited for the next project from an infrastructure standpoint, to have that uh, new distribution center. Let's talk real quick about you know, some of the, the retail initiatives that we want to uh, make sure that you all walk away uh, having full knowledge of. And I will call out that we want to be sort of the trusted advisor for segments of the business that maybe you don't have the time to do all the research and gather the knowledge base that is required to be uh, successful. So for example, we've got Chad here who's going to help us solicit and work with you on an ongoing basis on your gaming initiatives. And he is quite talented at that. We have Tara Davis who is here to help you with smart home and connected home solutions. She absolutely uh, is going to live and breathe and deliver uh, across multiple vendors and different solutions what it is that can make you successful 
uh, to participate in that growth area. We have Aaron Gates here, who is going to help uh, solicit and opportunity, uh, create opportunities for you in the home and houseware section of the business. You know, that is a good and growing and very consistent aspect of the business. So the fact that we are cross-platform, that we've got IT solutions and consumer electronics and home and housewares and gaming, uh, we love the fact that uh, we've got these experts, these residents experts that can help you succeed as well when it comes uh, to those areas. Some of the other things that uh, DNH is doing um, uniquely uh, for you is this you know, bundle opportunities. We love the fact that we can create just-in-time bundles, unique opportunities. We recognize the fact that we've got a big competitor, all of us, uh, in Seattle named Amazon. And I am a big proponent that we do not want to see all the business sort of funnel in one direction. That's never been healthy for the manufacturers, for a distributor, certainly not for you guys. So we really want to create unique opportunities that create value add for you. And bundles is one of those ways that we can do it so you're not going head to head with price, which we know is a, a no-win game for any one of us. So a lot of good initiatives when it comes to our retail endeavors. And I would, I would describe it as this. Nothing is off the table. So if you have ideas, you have promotions, you have things that you would like to uh, do a trial on, uh, bring it forth to DNH, bring it forth to the sales organization, sales management, myself. We clearly are not in a, um, a mode of saying no. We're saying yes. And we want to hear from you. We want to help you guys succeed in the marketplace, whether it's online, whether it's in-store, um, whether it is in a marketplace type environment. We're here to help you succeed. So I am uh, fortunate to have had the opportunity to work with uh, what, who has become a very good friend of mine, uh, Tracy, who many of you know. She's been with uh, Microsoft five years now in a, a various capacities. And she has, I would say, great influence on all our ability to succeed. And I say that because it's not just Xbox that she uh, delivers to the marketplace and her team, her sales organization. It is Surface products, consumer Surface. It is PC accessories. It is office products. It is the Windows solutions for consumer. This is a big business for all of us and an important business for all of us. And I say that because there are some competitive operating systems in the marketplace today. Those competitive operating systems do not in any capacity create near the universal opportunity as Microsoft has delivered over so many years. I've, we've been involved as DNH since 1995 uh, with Microsoft. And they have not, just like DNH has not wavered on a commitment to retail, Microsoft has not delivered on its commitment to embracing the channel, the retail channel, and helping you guys succeed in the marketplace with new and innovative technologies. So the fact that uh, Tra Tracy has a best-in-class team that's helping us succeed, I think there's great opportunities. And for those of you that are highly engaged with Microsoft, you already see those benefits. For those of you that are not as engaged as you might be, now is the day. Today is the day. Today is the day to figure out what is it that you're missing that's not part of your assortment that uh, Tracy and her team can help you succeed with. Because I've seen the roadmaps. I've seen their initiatives. I've seen them step on the accelerator. And I can tell you our business with Microsoft is exponentially greater each and every year as we move forward. And our expectation is that that's going to continue to grow and outpace the marketplace. So with that, Tracy, uh, come join me. Thank you for your time, everybody. All right. Thank you, Michael. Can you hear me OK? Awesome. So Nick and the team asked if I would do an overview on the gaming world um, and how it's playing out in the industry worldwide. So I'm going to do a high level view on that, but I wouldn't be Microsoft if I didn't talk also about our other products, which Michael mentioned, uh, with regards to Surface, the fantastic lineup we have there. Of course, Xbox as a subset of the gaming world, PCA accessories and Office. Um, from an outcome standpoint, why does it matter to you? It matters to you because holiday is right around the corner. We all want to be prepared. We all want to have the best offers out there. But we want to make sure that we understand where to make those investments. And there's, frankly, been a lot of chatter with regards to, um, with regards to gaming and where is the, the gaming console business going. So we'll talk about all those things throughout. Uh, at the end of the day, I want you each to leave with an idea of where the gaming industry is going, 
thought stimulation. What can you do? What kind of tools can we, DNH, Microsoft, provide to you to make your experiences better for the customers? And then lastly, the third thing, because I always do things in threes, what feedback can you give both of us, again, DNH and Microsoft, to improve our ability to provide for you? Because at the end of the day, we win together. Okay? So hopefully we'll accomplish that. A brief look at the agenda. Um, we'll take a look at top performing award that we just implemented. We'll go through the gaming transformation. Then we'll talk a little bit about some of the subcategories where I think there are opportunities for each of you in this room to make money. And I don't know that we're leveraging them as much as we, as we should be. So specifically, subscription opportunities, live streaming, uh, Xbox consumer products, and this is one that I'm going to want your feedback on. Uh, then Minecraft, some really cool stuff happening there. And then, of course, when you talk about cross-platform, PC gaming, because PCs are rocking it, and the gaming PCs specifically, which drive the ASPs up, are very important to our lineup. Then we'll move into productivity, because all work and no play, you've got to balance it. So we need to be productive in order to pay for the play. So we'll talk, about, we'll talk about Surface and what it can do for you and what's coming, and then Office and PCAs, all right? So... Um, our, on a quick note, our Microsoft team works very closely with all our distributor partners as well as many of our uh, reseller partners. And we realized that we hadn't really recognized our partners. So last year, the team, uh, who many of you work with, decided that we wanted to create an award for the top performing distributor and that we wanted to make sure that we recognized the people and the talent that work with us every day to make better sales. We wanted to make sure that, that it was a company that uh, demonstrated integrity and that showed growth and new business development. And so we created the Top Performing Distributor of the Year Award. And I'm very proud to say, Michael, please come up, that DNH achieved, overachieved on every single award last year. 99% year-over-year growth in revenue. Let's Thank give you. a hand Thank for you. that because it all came with you guys. Yeah. That perfect credit and collection scorecard, not many people can accommodate mm. that, brought on new classes of trade and partners. Again, talking about creativity and the growth and new business development, and then compliance. Because if it goes out the back door, nobody wins. So you keep it in the front door and you keep it on the back door. That's so congratulations. Great. Thank you very much. Um, we should uh, take this out drinking tonight like they do with the <laughs> Stanley Cup. We just have to make sure we somehow get it back to Harrisburg at the uh, not too dented at the end of the night. And thank God we win awards at work because I'm telling you, my kids and my wife give me no awards. So I'm going <laughs> to take a nice picture with this and uh, send it home. So thank you again, Tracy. Thank you, guys, everybody. Job well done, Team DNA. All right, so let's dive into the gaming transformation. Let's see. There we go. Sorry, the slides are a little off here, so bear with me a moment. So 600 million console users. We're so used to talking about console. That's what we know. That's what the business has been. But times have changed, and gamers don't just play that way anymore. They're wanting to play across multiple platforms. So they, they want to have multiple devices. They want to communicate differently, and we've got to all change with them. The consumers are telling us what they want. So at Microsoft... We took a look, and the total addressable market worldwide, 2.4 billion people. That is unbelievable. Now, that's worldwide, but that is a big number. That is across PC, console, and mobile platforms. Mobile, when you look worldwide, mobile is the highest penetrated. Okay? And I will tell you that Asia is number one, U.S. is number two. Then you've got Japan, Korea from a usage standpoint. We at Microsoft have got to make sure that we are looking at the total addressable market. Okay? So, 2. Point billion gamers, they're evolving the gaming experience. When I started gaming, it was Pong. Let me just mm -hmm. go on record saying, and half of you here don't know what that is, and that's fine. Um, but gaming as a platform has really become the buzzword, and that's starting to get very, very big. Watching and communicating. My husband's an engineer, and he gets so frustrated with our kids playing video all the time. I'm like, honey, 65% of all the gamers, are, all they do is watch. It's, bigger than, it's becoming bigger than football. And I, my husband's European, so I have to say American football. It's, bigger than, it's becoming bigger than American football. And so how do we capitalize that on that? And many of you may, who knows who Ninja is? Okay. 
We just announced a couple of weeks ago that at Mixer, which Microsoft owns Mixer, and it is a agnostic platform, we brought Ninja over from Twitch. That's a big investment. Let me just say, my kids were ecstatic. They're like, wow, that's amazing. I was kind of clue clued in as to who he was, but that was about the extent of it. So apparently it is a big deal because we got about six and a half million views within the first week of him coming over. This is what we're talking about. 65% of the community are watching online to understand what's going on, learn more about the games. It's how they do entertainment, okay? So times are changing. So what does that mean from a console standpoint? And there's been a lot of chatter, and this is where the slides get crazy, because I'm from Microsoft, we can't help ourselves, we do automation, um, and it throws the notes off a little bit, so bear with me. But there's been a lot of chatter about console sales are declining, they're going away. I, as a retailer, how am I gonna make money? Console sales are not going away. There is a natural life cycle to the product, right? You've got generation, this is Sony and Xbox data, it's public data. This is Gen 7 versus Gen 8, you're seeing the natural life cycle happening. People are still buying. You saw it stay up a little bit longer on Gen 8 because last year there was huge content that was released and it helped keep the system high, a little bit high. But there are, I'm here to tell you, consoles are not going away. They are, at the, they are central to our cross-platform play and they are the most efficient, most effective device to use when you're gaming and nanoseconds count. So the point here is there are still new to console buyers out there it's key upon us, DNH, Microsoft, probably Microsoft first in partnership with DNH, to make sure we're giving you, our retail partners, the right offers, the right holiday um, bundles, back to your retail enablement, to make sure that you're set up for success for the holiday season, because the customers are out there. This is not going away. It's a natural evolution of the life cycle. We announced Scarlet. Sony announced their Gen 9 consoles. So things have slowed down a little bit. Again, natural evolution. So what do we do to stimulate that growth in holiday? And that's what we want to talk to you about in our individual one-on-ones uh, today and tomorrow, okay? So games are growing. And again, this is another one that's up for discussion. The feedback we get is, yeah, but you're getting all the game growth. We're not getting all the game growth. We're getting a lot of game growth, we being Microsoft. But I'm here to tell you that we are seeing double-digit growth in retail partners who are invested. There are different elements of the business, so digital. Digital matters. People are not buying the FPP any longer, so we've got to change how we go to business. We've got to make sure we've got the right tools in place to capitalize on that. This, this data shows you 2017 and 2018, the actuals, from a sales perspe perspective on total gaming spend. Then you can see the pay-to-play, which is also becoming a big component. Both of these elements you as a retail partner can capitalize on. The question is, are you stocking and do you supply digital capability subscription cards, CSV cards, because that's what the gamers are coming in. Not everybody has a credit card. There's a lot of unbanked people. And by the way, being a parent, there are a lot of parents who don't want their kids to have the credit card on there because if you do that, I've found out very early on, your bill goes up one month. So that just took one time for that to happen. But there are a lot of people buying CSV, whether it's for your kids, birthday presents, stocking stuffers, if holiday is the best time to have that. So I'm telling you, these are opportunities for all of us in this room to make money. Oh, actually, one thing real quick. Oh, this is where I'm gonna probably mess it up. You may be wondering why the data, why the share is going down here a little bit, because we're gonna be competing for share of wallet as the Gen 9 consoles launch. So that's why you see, because at the end of the day, people have so mu only so much money. So that's the only reason you see the dip there. Just wanted to provide that little clarification. All right, so gamers now, at Microsoft, we've always had the console at the, or I should say Xbox. We've always had the console at the center of our strategy and how we do business. The reality is we've got to change based on what our customers have told us. And the consumer is at the center of our strategy. The consumer is telling us, whether it's the data, whether it's how they're shopping, whether it's how the sales are going, they're telling us that they want the ability to play on PCs, they want the ability to play on mobile devices, which we talked about, and by the way, they want to play on consoles, et cetera. So they're the ones who are driving the change. And this is frankly, coming from a big company, this is an adjustment to say the consumer knows best. Maybe we at Microsoft don't know, necessarily know best. And so um, with our, our leadership, they're very clear that we are all about the customer. And so things that we do are data based on what the customer are telling us. Okay? 
All right, so what does that mean from a Microsoft vision statement? We want people to play the games they want, with the people they want, and on the devices that they want. And we're making three big bets. Number one is content. We bought quite a few studios. We have 15 total studios to develop that content and prove and improve what we've been providing. We'll be the first to tell you that we've had some opportunities. Um, so, but it takes time. When you get those, you get the studios in, it takes a little time for them to build that. So keep your eyes out. We've got some new ones coming and uh, very excited to see those start developing. So content's number one. Number two, and again, going back, 65% of the uh, gamers want to communicate and watch. So community is very important. That is the second key element that we need to focus in on. And then lastly, I think all of you heard, have heard Project xCloud, um, making it available to anyone, anywhere. Okay? And we've not been real vocal about what all that means. We announced it at E3, went into a little detail. There were, some of you may have actually gotten to experience it. It's pretty cool. It works well. We'll be launching that, um, I think, in the uh, next half of the year uh, overseas first. Um, but we are in trial modes, and we did demonstrate it at E3, and I actually had one of my retail partners um, for a partner that you mentioned. I won't mention names. Mm -hmm. But he said, he said that is the coolest thing he's seen. He was surprised at how well the phone operated off of the cloud. And just as a side note, again, going back, and I'll say Amazon, we do a lot. Of, Amazon, we compete, and we partner with very closely. Similarly, we may have seen the announcement we did with Sony. Sony's going to be working with us on our cloud. So it's always interesting to see how we evolve and, and make sure that we're inclusive and, and making it able for everyone to play wherever they want, whenever they want, on the devices that they want. All right. So we have a lot of competition in this particular area. You've got the uh, gaming providers that don't necessarily have the cloud access. You've got the new entrants that are coming in, Amazon and Google, Google but they don't have the content. We are one of the few that is actually set up to win across all three elements of the ecosystem. So I'm very proud to be a part of that um, because it's very exciting and the opportunities are unbelievable. But again, keeping in mind that we keep the consumer at the, key, at the core to our development. So a nice slide to give you an overview of kind of what's happened. So what's taken over? Again, we talked about it. Digital is continuing to grow. It's over 50% of the sales that we see now. Okay, so did I say this? If you aren't in it, it's time to get in it. Post-sales monetization, okay? Continuing to grow. So Fortnite was the one that really just brought this on, and, and CSV has just gone, uh, cash stored value, has just gone through the roof. So again, opportunity to have that flywheel going. What's starting to take off? Subscriptions. Not only is our Game Pass product out there, but you've also had Sony, with their now, you've got uh, Discord coming in, so there's a lot of activity around subscriptions. Uh, Steam is now getting competition. That's a new one. Okay, Again, PC gaming is big, and it's so interesting to look at the demographics on PC gaming versus console gaming. I, you know, I have a sample of two boys, one's 20, one's 14, PC gaming, console gaming. And I was talking to some other people similar there. Now, that's similar to what we see in the data that we find, is that the, based on which, you know, Gen X versus, or Gen Z versus millennials kind of defines that. But PC gaming is very big, and so how do we make sure that we're maximizing on that? Um, and then just starting, as we talked about, the game streaming. Google was big to announce theirs. We've announced Project X Cloud, And then cross-playing across all elements. Very key. All right, so subscription. Did I mention that if you aren't selling it, you need to be? So, very important. I'm just going to highlight, I think everybody's familiar with Live and Gold. You may not be familiar with Game Pass Ultimate that we launched uh, and talked about at E3. Game Pass Ultimate really allows us to combine the best products and services. It, uh, it encourages the uh, social interaction uh, and then allows monetization across the ecosystem for everybody. And essentially, this slide kind of sums it up for you nicely. It's about 50% of the price, again, consumer at the center, give them a value that makes them happy. And if you, they, they get the Game Pass Ultimate, they get all three of the elements. They get the Game Pass for Xbox, for PC gaming, they, so they can play it on either product. They've got the Game Pass for console games, which allows them the uh, 99 different games that switch out every month so they can try different games and play. 
and then it has live gold in, in as well. Now, why is this important to you? Because you guys can be selling these to your customers. It's a simple add-on. We're retailers. That's what we do. Um, some retailers add on better than others, and that's where we at Microsoft and DNH can help you with some of the best practices that we've seen. It's just something we have to remember to talk about because we forget. We're always so focused on the console or the PC. But this is where, honestly, this is where the revenue stream comes in on a regular basis. It's like the milk in the back of the store. Live stream. This is one that we are not maximizing on in the industry very well. Um, specifically, again, customers have told us that they want to communicate, that they want to interact live and watch. So what is it you can do to change your websites, change your capabilities to interface with your customers? We have the ability, um, again, our marketing team, both at Microsoft as well as DNH, we have the ability to work with you and get some of these capabilities up. Um, it, we have a tool, a tool that we call, Mi or a, I guess I would say, a, category, a tool that we call Mixer, and we can help you get that up on your website, depending on where you are in development from an IT standpoint. It's not that difficult if you have CNET capability. I'll leave it at that. Let's talk more over the next two days. But what this does for you, this allows you to keep your customers on your web pages. It drives legitimacy for you in the gaming business. You've got the data here. It adds 5.4% lift in your cart. They add on because they see active motion and interaction on your websites. It allows you to six, time, a six times increase in your pages that are viewed. Um, 1.4 million hours of content are consumed by consumers by watching live streaming. So this is something that we can provide for you. You just need to remind us or ask us about it. Just to give you a view of what it looks like. If there's no streaming, you've just got a picture, which is nice. You got an offer, but it's not engaging and it's not exciting. So what happens when you add live streaming? You can see upper in the corner. It, it, it draws your attention. It's the real thing. You've got the gentleman on, from Mixer who's doing, playing the game and providing commentary. We can get this on your websites, okay? It's easy. I feel like I should have a Staples button. That was easy. So help us help you. Let's get this up and going. All right. Oh, this is slide build. So this is about what we can do for you. It's very easy to use technology. Technology. It's clean. There's no, we scrub it to make sure there's no offensive language. There's nothing that would be problematic as a retailer to a public domain. We take care of that for you. It is agnostic from a platform standpoint. So it's not, we won't just push Xbox. You'll see different things on there. And now you'll see Ninja on there, so why not? All right? So consumer products. This is where I'd like to get feedback over the next couple of days from you guys. We don't, today, offer this. I want to gauge interest. We are looking to add merchandise, Xbox merchandise. It's better margin. That's something you guys have provided us a lot of feedback on. This is something that you may or may not want to carry. Um, fans have told us that they love it. We've had it at E3, et cetera. I'm just not sure, my team's not sure if this is something you'd be interested in. So this is, part, this is the part where you guys come back to us and say, yeah, I would love it, and this is, I'd like hats, I'd like shirts, or no, this makes sense. Just let us know what makes the most sense. This is um, because we can bring it out to you if it's something that you feel would be beneficial for you. All right, and Minecraft. I have to talk about Minecraft. This is gonna be a I started to say huge real, uh, year for us. I'm in sales, so it's going to be a really big year. I don't want to overpromise and underdeliver, but in all seriousness, it's going to be a very big year for Minecraft. It's on a roll already, and it's going to even grow bigger. You've got, most of you are familiar, it's a, it's, Minecraft is really an uh, open sandbox game. It's the number one viewed game on YouTube already. We have 91 million viewers every month. And we tend to forget about Minecraft because it's been around for a while, and we're like, everybody got so caught up in the Fortnite evolution, but Minecraft has been staple non, uh, nonstop. And we are actually, over the last two months since we made the announce, a uh, couple of announcements at E3, we have actually seen double-digit growth on the games already, and that is going to continue. I wanted to share this slide with you specifically because as a retailer, you want to plan key beats. And think about, depending on who your target segment is that comes into your stores, think about if there's an opportunity for you when we launch these two games in the spring. This one particularly is going to be huge. Are there opportunities for you to do 
in-store gaming competitions, tournaments, things like that. These are the creative things that when we sit down together as a team, Microsoft, DNH, and yourselves, what are the opportunities that we can do that are unique, that help you stand out in the crowd? And if you want to, depending, again, depending on who your target segment is and the medium that you go after them, what is it we can do to leverage these key beats? Because Microsoft's going to be putting a lot of advertising into this, and we need to, we need to ride the wave. All right, so this is a good opportunity. People are going to want to play more. Um, and again, like I said, the dungeons, is, is we're expecting big things out of that, very big things. All right, so PC gaming, the other avenue that's been doing incredibly well. Um, why is Windows so important? Honestly, PC get more games are made for Windows than any of the other platforms at the end of the day. And there's a lot of things that we have done to make sure that we stay ahead of the foray on that. Specifically, um, I'll come to those in just a minute because it's more important to say why is it important to me as a retailer. It's important to each of you because the ASPs are higher, there's more margin, the product satisfaction is much higher, plus 20%. Okay? And when you have product satisfaction, you have customers, it's repeat business, etc. In addition, the refresh cycle is over a year faster, so that is an opportunity for, again, keep the customers coming back. And then a higher attach rate. So all of these are benefits for us as retail partners. All right? So then, What's Microsoft doing specifically to make sure that we stay ahead of the forefront in the PC gaming category? And there's a couple of key elements. The first one is the ray tracing and variable rate shading. And that's essentially what that is, is allowing us to have very clear pictures as you go through. You can see shadows of um, sunlight. You can see detail that you couldn't see before. We've made it very, very clear uh, with the 1080p system. Second thing is the Xbox Game Bar. This allows you to take different widgets as a player. It allows you to quickly access them and be more efficient. And again, as everybody knows, when you're playing games, every little second matters. It makes a difference. And so to me, it wouldn't be a big deal. To my 20-year-old, it's a big deal. Um, and he has seen a difference with using some of those widgets. I, I couldn't tell you what they do. I just know that he tells me what they do, and he gives me feedback often. So it is a big deal. And then, of course, Mixer we talked about, and then the Game Pass for PC, so allowing uh, people to participate in the Game Pass offering that we have so they can try the different 99 games that cycle in and out every month. All right. Oops. Productivity. Again, you got to work if you want to play. And so we have some great products at uh, Microsoft. The ecosystem is a huge, huge opportunity for us, and I will say, DNH is one of the few partners nationwide that can actually provide you with that ecosystem. And so we're very pleased for that partnership. And I know everybody in this room, again, going back to the cup, um, they allow us to really demonstrate that capability across every category that we provide. Um, it's been a great year for Surface, so thank you. Thank you, everyone in this room. You've all helped. Um, it's been exciting to watch as we've seen the growth. Um, my job is to make sure I instill confidence in you that we're going to continue that growth. And so I will go through that with you. And then we'll talk about PCA accessories as well as Office. So the role of Surface, uh, there were, it was about six years ago, I think it was six, that we launched Surface. And the real intent behind that was to drive the development and innovation in the category. We had clunkers, that's what we called them. We had clunkers that were big and gray. They were slow and they weren't moving the way we wanted them to. And so when we introduced Surface, it was to get sleeker, more efficient, and better operating devices in our customers' hands, and candidly, to set the wave for our OEM partners to follow, to drive and stimulate that innovation. So very important. We also wanted to bring, number two, we wanted to bring the best of Microsoft to, Microsoft to customers, making sure it worked very tightly with Office and all the products that we offer. And then lastly, just candidly, to win against Apple. Apple's an incredible competitor. You have to respect them. Their product is beautiful. And we needed something to compete. So those were really the, the key drivers behind why we brought it in. So after that, it's, it's why so many products? Well, we wanted to have something for everyone. And so the form factors that we have, really the pro introduced the two-in-one. We were the first to bring that out. 
laptop provided us with the style and the speed in the clamshell space. Studio was for that creative kind of niche player out there. And then Go, Book is more of a power horse, and Go is more for the entry level. So we really wanted to provide something for everyone. And we now have a portfolio that allows you to tailor to who your customers are. As I said, it's been a historic year, 35% um, year-over-year growth. It's unbelievable. Um, I don't know if we're public with that, so um, maybe I should have that deleted. But 35% year-over-year growth. And again, thank you to everyone in this room. We could not have done it without you. Um, it's, been very it's been very exciting. I think this one's my most prideful element, the highest customer satisfaction on the laptop. We've made great strides there, again, based on feedback that you guys give us. And then the category, as I said, it is 35% on the year-over-year -year growth. So how are we going to drive more growth together? At the end of the day, it's about demand. We have to drive demand. Okay, there will be a continued investment in above-the-line opportunities, whether it's the NFL sponsorship, be it the advertising, which we'll take a look at in just a moment. It's also about the partnerships, and it's about stronger promotions, keeping those going during the key beats. So more to come on that. And I think, Armando, this is where I need your help to do the ad. We're actually, for Microsoft, getting very direct with the competition. For us, this is edgy, so hopefully you guys have had a chance to see the ad. Uh-oh. We lost it. I didn't touch anything. All right, well, let's go back. Armando, let's just go back to the, uh, the slides, to the next slide. There you go. Net net is, it's pretty edgy. And for Microsoft, it's, it, I was surprised. I got to be honest. I was surprised. And I actually, for, OK, I'm surprised again. Mm. <laughs> so, um, but it was, it, it was it's, really taking on Mac and going after it. Um, so maybe they'll come out with some guy who, who in, and Nick, this is for you, somebody from England named Sir Face <laughs> to counter us. <laughs> so we'll see. All right. <laughs> yeah. All right. So from an accessory standpoint, we often don't talk about accessories. That's very important because, as, again, as retailers, it's about the basket size. We do have some great products to add in there. We've got the keyboards. Very important, we got the gaming mice, we got ergonomic opportunities. Don't forget to talk with us about the, uh, the accessory opportunities. And up oh, here we got an animation. There you go, the gaming mice. And then lastly, want to talk about Office. This is the unsung hero. And this is, again, when you think about recurring revenue, we are doing, we're really focused on subscription with Office, which is a recurring opportunity. We want your customers coming back in because we are constantly updating the product and those customers are able to receive those updates real time when we roll them out, with re whether it is on PowerPoint, whether it's the uh, Excel capabilities, et cetera. So this is a very important product that we need to make sure that we're remembering to pitch. People who buy PCs or, frankly, Macs as well, if they add, if they add Office onto it, they have a much higher satisfaction with the product all up, and they're using it much more effectively. And it was very important when I said Mac. We do sell across the platforms. It works across Google. It works across Mac. I will tell you that we sell a boatload of Office through the, um, the Mac app and their owned and operated stores. So if you're questioning whether or not that's real, and I can't go into the numbers, but I will tell you it's very real. Customers, it's one of the top things customers ask when they're in the owned and operated Apple stores. Can I add Office? Okay. So again, if you're selling Macintosh, you should have Office placed with it. Um, all right. And with that, I want to thank the DNH team. Um, I asked you for three things. I hope that you have taken away from this. The first one is hopefully you've gotten better insights on the gaming industry and where it's going. Two, hopefully you found some tools that might help you make more money and be more successful both holiday as well as going forward, whether it's the subscription services, Mixer, or the um, 
uh, Minecraft, Key Beats. There's a lot of different things out there that we can work together on to pull plans on. And then lastly, hopefully this has stimulated some thoughts in your mind to provide us with feedback on how we can improve or help your business. Um, your contacts, I hope everybody knows, but just in case you don't, from a DNH standpoint, Chad, where is Chad? Hold your hand up. There, hold in the box. There you go. And then we've got Matt. Okay. Yeah, I was like, I don't think I saw him. Um, and then from a, from a Microsoft standpoint, we have Holly Bonds and Jen Pope. And then from the West, we have Greg Smith. All right. So without further ado, Nick, I think you have some uh, awards or prizes. <laughs> 